In this tutorial, we are gonna take this photo, which has got a branch that's a little bit uncomfortably close to our subject, and we're gonna turn it into this photo where we put a little bit of breathing space in there. Folks, my name is Mac Laskowski. Welcome to the latest tutorial. And what I'd ask you is don't think of this as just a bird on a branch and that's the only thing you can use this for. So this could be uh, portrait photography where there's something you wanna keep in the photo but put some space in. This could be landscape photography where there's a branch from a tree or something that's too close to a rock or a mountain that's in the background or, or something along those lines. So it's not just bird photography. This can be used in so many different ways and the techniques I'll show you can be, you know, really translated to anything, okay? All right, uh, go Bucks. We won the uh, Bucks Tampa Bay, won the Super Bowl last weekend. So uh, giving a little bit of team spirit here, but let's go ahead and uh, dive into the tutorial. Let me share my screen with you. All right, so I went, uh, there's a little place called the Osprey Trail near me. And of course, guess what they have? So uh, here's a photo. In fact, there's a, a really interesting one. I found a very rare species of Osprey. So if you look at the markings on the head from this one, these are called Kansas City Ospreys. So they actually fly into Tampa and they fly in at certain times of the year during certain football games as well. So obviously this one's a little bit sad today, but <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, I, I, I just thought that was a funny little pose there, but I will use I will use one where we have a little bit of eye connection here. And, and you could see the branch is a little bit uncomfortably close here. And we just wanna give some breathing room because I like I like having the branch there. I think it frames up nicely. In fact, maybe I'll switch over to the the, the, deject, the dejected osprey uh, for this one because I cropped it a little bit differently here. But I like how this branch is here. I could get rid of this in about three seconds with content aware, but I do like how these branches have framed it. It's just, this is way too close. So we have a couple of options here. Option number one uh, could be, we could go, we're gonna go to our lasso tool for almost all of this. And we're gonna make a lasso selection around the branch here, okay? Again, I like the branch being there. It's just, it's, it almost looks like an accident, the fact that it's too close. So we just need to get a little bit of breathing room in there. And again, that goes for anything in your photos. I think, you know, we can't, we can't have too many things that get near our subject that are too close. We want breathing room in, in just about all circumstances. So. I go and I put a lasso selection around that. Um, one of the things that we could do is a, a tool that I actually don't use very often, um, but we could come over here and you could go grab the patch tool. All right, and that's gonna be with the spot healing brush, you can press the letter J and you're gonna see the patch tool under there. We can go grab the patch tool and we can actually just get rid of it. You know, just move this over and that does actually a really good job of getting rid of the branch altogether. So that could be an option. Again, for me personally, I like the frame, okay? So the um, one thing I'm gonna do is deselect that. I'm gonna press Command or Control J to give us a copy. So that way we can compare a before and after. And then I'll just go up here to select, reselect, and that will reselect my last selection. So if you don't just wanna get rid of it, which you could use Content Aware, you could use a number of tools, what I just showed you, the patch tool does a good job. If we want to move it, we have a couple of different ways we can do that. One of them is going to be grouped right in there with the patch tool. I'm going to show you two different ways because they all work differently. Your photo is going to be different from mine. But I'm going to go over here under the spot healing brush, healing patch tool to content aware move. All right. And what that does is once you have something selected, you're going to put your cursor in the middle and you're just going to move it. Okay, just move it over to the left-hand side. Photoshop's gonna use its content aware technology. Let's just hit the checkbox up at the top there. Photoshop's gonna use its content aware technology to get rid of that, and then it'll move it over here. And it does actually a really good job in this photo. We could use cloning and whatever to get rid of that little stump down there if you wanted to. Um, but it does a really good job. And you have structure and color up here, which if you don't deselect, you can manipulate those and redo this if you want to. So you don't have to keep selecting and deselecting and all that stuff. So you can manipulate those if structure would be, if there's bringing in some remnants from the background, color would be if the color is not matching between the two areas there. So you could try to, to adjust those before you deselect. That's the key to this is before you come up here and go to deselect, adjust those things and you can pretty much adjust them on the fly, okay? 
So that would be one way that we could go in there and move it. Uh, if it works for you, great. I consider that the easy way, the fast way. And if it's a simple background, it'll work pretty good. So give that one a try. I am gonna undo this one. And um, really quick, guys. I'm gonna before I get into the before I get into the the next part of this. Um, so I'm gonna share a very interesting statistic with you guys. Um, I I look at my YouTube stats. I get tens of thousands of views each week, and 75% of you watching this are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. So I'm gonna ask a, a really big favor, and if you would subscribe, uh, I don't bombard you. I do live sessions each week and usually one recorded tutorial. So I hit the little notifications thing on there as well. But uh, if you would just subscribe, it helps me spread the word, it helps YouTube see that there's a lot of interaction going on here and helps me grow the channel a little bit. So I would greatly appreciate it if you would do that. All right, back to our tutorial here. So uh, we've got method number one, which was content aware move. Method number two is a little bit different. So we've made the selection and we're gonna come up to the edit menu and we're gonna go down to a tool you might not have used before. It's called Puppet Warp. So we're gonna click on Puppet Warp and essentially what you do before you do anything is you get these little pins, you put pivot points in here, all right? So I'm gonna put a pivot point down here. I'll put one up here. And if I just do that, you'll see as I move this, it lets me pivot that around. Now, if I put another little pivot point in here, now I can even start to move this in a different way. So I actually don't think I need too many of them. Maybe I'll just do the two there and angle this to the side a little bit like so. So now we're, we're warping this, moving it, changing it. And then we just come up here to the little checkbox when we're done and we hit that checkbox and now it's gone in there and it's fixed that. Now, of course, we got some problems because the difference is, is if I'm gonna deselect here, the difference is, is that if I hide this top layer or I had the bottom layer and show the top layer, you can see what it did. You can see that it cut out essentially a hole in my photo um, as I move that away. Oh, the only reason you saw the other branch behind it was because it had um, it had the other layer that was underneath it. So that's the only, you know, the only reason that you saw that there. So what we can do here is get a little bit creative in how we would fix it. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna redo this. Let's do one quick thing. I wanna show you something here because this could happen to you and it's just little tools and tricks that I think are worth having. You can see a little seam along there. And I wanna show you a quick way to avoid that. So I just hit undo a couple of times, Command or Control Z. One of the things I'm gonna do is go to Select, Modify, Feather. So you go under the Select menu, down to Modify, down to Feather. And I'm gonna feather this by about five pixels or so. So that's just gonna soften the edge of the selection. Then I'll go back in and I'll do that puppet warp that we just did. And again, I'm, I'm only gonna use two points here. So I think that would be just fine. So I'll just move this over like so. Hit that little checkbox. There we go. So that softens that selection and that should help you with any little seams there. Um, some tools that if you do see some seams are the patch tool, the clone stamp tool, um, other things like that where you can go in and, and, and try to fix a little bit of that. But the main thing to me, that would be a, a simpler task because there's just a small line there. To me, the big thing is, is we gotta figure out how do we get rid of this branch that's back here? Because remember, there's this whole section inside of there that needs to be filled. So same, uh, same idea is we have to go in and we have to make a selection. So I'll go in here and I'm gonna take my lasso tool and I'm gonna make a selection of it. All right, gotta be a little bit careful around the edge of the bird, but again, a little bit of fine tuning when you're done with the clone stamp tool should be pretty simple. So I make a selection of that area here. Um, we have, again, same, same type of options we had before. Remember, this is just a distraction. Don't think of it as a transparent pixels. Think of it as a distraction in your photo that just happens to be transparent pixels. So how would you handle removing distractions? Well, I know one way I would try that would be go up here to edit, go down to content aware fill, and you can use your little plus brush to paint in parts of the background that you want Photoshop to consider filling that with. 
And that's probably going to give us a similar result to what we saw before. So I, I don't expect it to be perfect, but it should be pretty close and it should work for a lot of photos. I'll just go ahead and paint in the sky there. <laughs> Actually it looks pretty darn good over here. So uh, you can see this is the after over there. And then again, you can um, try you know, messing around with your color adaptation and that should actually make that look a little bit better too. So that would be method number one. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of there. If that doesn't work, then again, it's just a distraction. So what did we do before? I think the patch tool is really good at removing distractions for this stuff. So uh, the only trick that we have to do is we can't, we can't use the patch tool on, on two separate layers like this because we have a little bit of both layers that we want. So what we would have to do here is just merge these two together. So I would click on the top layer, press Command or Control E, and that will merge those two layers, or basically merge it down. So Command E on the Mac or Control E on the PC. That merges it down. So again, I've made my selection. I go over to the toolbox, grouped in with the Spot Healing Brush tool as the patch tool. Up at the top, I have uh, normal, source, transparent is not checked, uh, diffusions five, if you wanna you know, look at my settings here. And then all I'm gonna do is drag that over to the left, just like we did before. And that should do a really good job of getting rid of it. Now, if it does leave a little bit of a, a little bit of a tiny seam over there, uh, simple fix, I would say, go grab the clone stamp tool. Just press the letter S as the keyboard shortcut. Go grab the clone stamp tool, option or all click to samp, sample in an area right next to it. And then you could go in there and just paint away. I'm using a soft edge brush. You might even wanna use a harder edge brush there, but we can go in there and get rid of any of those you know, tiny little blemishes or things that we tend to, uh, that we tend to see inside of there. So um, let me go ahead and switch back over to you guys there. So uh, as I said before, you know, I asked you to extrapolate this to a lot of different situations. I think you could use it not just for a wild day photo, but a lot of other things as well. Also, as I, uh, as I mentioned in the middle of the video there, if you would do me a big favor, uh, hit the little subscribe button if you're not already, and uh, also turn on the notifications, and that way uh, you'll get notified whenever I release a new video.